Imagine buying a console that's basically a portal to a new gaming era. Or paying for hardware so powerful it sits idle because nobody uses it. Which future do you want? Today we're breaking down the leaks, the tech, and the high stakes choices behind the rumored Xbox Magnus and Sony's PlayStation 6. By the end, you'll know what could shape pricing, performance, and the way developers build games for the next decade. The next generation console is definitely not canceled. The future of gaming is changing, especially for Microsoft, and they have an unconventional strategy to compete in the gaming market. Reliable leakers like Moore's Law is Dead and Kepler L2 have been dropping details that are starting to form a picture. So far, I don't have any evidence of a smaller Xbox Magnus. And so if everything's an Xbox, I don't see the need for a bunch of consoles. Make one great one and throw that out and stick to it. Sony's making a cheaper one because of all of these reasons of like getting the PS4 people to upgrade, trying to establish a new baseline. Frankly, you know, Sony knows that the PS5, it sold well, it made the money, tons of money, <laughs> but it never got the game support it really should have gotten for like next gen experiences because they had to keep supporting PS4. And so if they're gonna tell everyone, hey, I'm sorry, there was never a second Ratchet and Clank like game that supposedly could not work on PS4, you know what we're gonna do? At least when you upgrade to the next gen, it's gonna be cheap and that's going to make you not look twice if it's like 500 to 300 dollars for the ps6 and ps6 s but that's not the xbox argument so i don't know that there would be a smaller one both microsoft and sony are deep into development the two candidates microsoft's next gen codenamed magnus and sony's playstation 6 and the rumors point to very different philosophies under the hood The most eye-catching claim? The Magnus APU could be about 46% larger than the PS6's. On paper, larger die area often implies more transistors and higher peak performance. But history warns us that bigger doesn't always mean better in real-world games. Microsoft reportedly plans a chiplet-based design for Magnus. Chiplets can boost yield and let manufacturers mix and match blocks, but they introduce interconnects and those can add latency or limit efficiency compared to a single monolithic die. Sony is rumored to favor a smaller monolithic APU, which may be simpler to integrate and less prone to interconnect complexity. This, this is AMD Magnus, the APU slated to go into the next gen Xbox, and it will be the largest APU used in a gaming console in history. Seriously, as covered in a leak a few months ago, it will total roughly 408 millimeters squared. That's about 13% larger than both the Xbox Series X and the Xbox One X's die size, and it is a 46% larger die than the monolithic one that will be used in the PlayStation 6 home console. So yeah, it should be stronger than the PS6. Memory configurations in the leaks are bold. Magnus, 36 gigabytes of GDDR7 on a 192-bit bus. PS6, 30 gigabytes of GDDR7 on a 160-bit bus, both using three gigabyte memory modules. Those figures leap past current generation consoles, promising much higher bandwidth and capacity for textures, streaming vast worlds, and AI workloads. But more memory and bandwidth means a bigger bill of materials and tougher cooling. And unless developers specifically leverage the extra headroom, a lot of that horsepower can go unseen by players. Remember the Xbox One era? A bigger die but slower memory, and Sony's quicker memory delivered stronger real-world performance. The same caveat applies. Top-tier specs only matter when software is optimized to use them. If Magnus ships with a massive chip and enormous bandwidth, it still depends on three things. Developer prioritization, middleware and engine support, and clever system-level tools to unlock that power. There's also money in the equation. Larger APUs and more RAM push the bill of materials up. Rumored price range for Magnus? 
somewhere between $1,200 and $1,300. Console territory that starts to look a lot like a baseline gaming PC. That doesn't automatically doom the idea. If the console truly delivers performance on par with a $2,000 PC with an RTX 5080 class GPU, some buyers might bite. But we've seen how theory and practice diverge. Modern tricks like upscaling, dynamic resolution, and balanced performance modes often blur the difference between high-end and mid-range hardware. Even today, cross-platform games often prioritize development efficiency over hardware-specific optimization. Studios choose stable pipelines and parity to meet deadlines and budgets. So will developers leverage Magnus's rumored advantage? It's an open question. The path to meaningful use could be giving power to players. Imagine toggles for path tracing quality, upscaler choices, or true performance presets. Let players pick between max visuals or max frame rate. Make the advanced settings accessible for enthusiasts and hidden for casuals. If Microsoft wants Magnus to act like a hybrid PC, it needs to adopt PC-style flexibility. Broad display support, high refresh rates, 240 hertz or more, and deep graphical configuration. This time around, Xbox is going to be much more than a console. It should also be something that can run more than just Xbox apps and challenge the PC gaming market, at least somewhat directly. And although it is using a large, for a console, APU die, I will say that compared to PC mega APUs, like Strix Halo for example, it's actually a tad smaller. And therefore, yes, well I don't see Xbox Magnus as likely being a direct competitor to the next gen PlayStation console anymore due to how much more Magnus will cost to make than like the PS6. Compared to PC gaming systems, I actually think it will be much more favorable because yes, it will have bridge dies. That's more expensive than what the PS6 will use in a monolithic die, but it won't be that much more expensive. At the same time, it must preserve the plug and play simplicity that consoles promise. Default presets keep casual players happy. Nested advanced menus give power users the tools they expect. That balance could be the differentiator. Raw hardware is only one part of the puzzle. Software solutions, AI-assisted upscalers, compression tech, better streaming, often yield bigger gains per dollar than brute force silicon. Console makers who invest in smart software and dev tools may get more consistent real-world wins. So what could the market look like? Two likely paths. Sony doubles down on efficiency a smaller, tightly integrated PS6 that focuses on balanced performance, developer-friendly integration, and predictable pricing. Microsoft aims high, a chiplet-based Magnus with massive memory and bandwidth, pushing toward a PC-like experience at a higher cost and with higher risk. Either path could win. Efficiency and smart design can match or beat raw power when developers and tools align. Or if Microsoft nails the ecosystem, Magnus could redefine console expectations. But only if developers and players can actually use that power. Which would you choose? A lean, efficient PS6 or a powerhouse Magnus that blurs the line with PC? Drop your pick in the comments and tell us what features you'd want unlocked on a next-gen console. Like and subscribe for deeper dives into console tech and leaks as they evolve. Hit the bell. You won't want to miss the next update.